Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video. Warzone 2.0 is releasing today at the time of recording this video. So I think it's a good time to take a look at the tactical overview that Call of Duty has provided us with. Let's drop right in. I think the first thing that we need to take a look at is of course the launch trailer. I have not watched this yet. So this is my first time reacting to it. Let's get it. All right, here we go. The good old drop plane. The wait is over. Also in 2.0. You sick. Good music. Be advised, the gas is burning. Prep for contact. Very nice. Let's go. Okay. Nice. A lot came from that. Can we just take a moment to talk about the amount of vehicles it looks like we will have available to us? I think this one is electrical. Yep, listen to it. That's an electrical car. Nice. And we also have the sedan, of course. However, I don't want to focus too much on reviewing or going through the trailer. Let's take a look at what's actually in this blog post. So first off, we got direct developer comms, Trello board coming online. To support Warzone 2.0, Raven Software is set to launch a Trello board, which will track and provide updates on live issues players may have or may encounter while, play, while playing the game. Uh, it will also include patch notes, playlist updates, and XP event information, and you can visit that tr Trello board for these direct communications from the developer here. I will leave a link to that down below in the description. And in addition, bookmark the following page and expect Warzone 2.0 and Modern Warfare 2 patch notes to be available here. I think that's Amazing. I think that's awesome. But we're getting to the juicy stuff now. Battle Royale overview here. Loadouts, custom weapons, a streamlined backpack. Welcome to Warzone. At the start of Battle Royale matches when operators drop from a cargo plane somewhere over El Mestra, expect to have only an X-12 handgun, two armor plates and a pair of fists. To your name. Everything else must be collected within the map, including a proper loadout. Returning from the original Warzone, a loadout in Battle Royale contains the following primary and secondary weapon, lethal and tactical equipment, and your perk package. Loadouts arrive in loadout drops, which can descend at any time between the second and sixth circle collapses through an in game event. Loadouts can also be earned earlier in the match by clearing out a stronghold once those are available. See stronghold section for more details. We'll get to that. If a loadout is lost or you want to have elements from multiple loadouts on your operator, you can earn additional loadouts by clearing another stronghold or picking up another loadout drop. Custom weapons, instead of buying loadouts from a buy station, the buy station contains only custom primary weapons from your loadout. This allows you to spend that earned cash on a weapon that fits your personal meta, but those other loadout items are only earned by risking the trip to a loadout drop or by clearing out a stronghold. So instead of buying a loadout drop from the shop like in Warzone 1, you're now only able to buy your custom primary weapon from your loadout. 
in the buy station, which is still cool. Say you are really into sniping and you have your sniper build that you're in love with, you'll still be able to buy that from the buy station. Streamlined backpack as opposed to DMC Battle Royale features a backpack that works in a more passive way as an extra place for equipment, armor plates and other small items if those spaces are occupied on your loadout or operator. At any time you can switch out active loadout items with whatever is in the backpack. In terms of item gathering, there is no menu navigating outside of these containers, duffel bags, cash registers, weapon lockers and medicine cabinets, by default cash, armor and any items that you already have in your loadout or backpack, example specific ammo type, are automatically picked up. Now this one I, did, I did briefly went over this blog post and I saw this interrogation. Um, after successfully downing an enemy in a squad based mode, you can either go for the coup de grace or more strategically interrogate them. By interacting with a downed enemy player, you will learn the locations of all their allies via red dot pings on the minimap, as well as outlines of the environment like a snapshot grenade for a short period of time. You will also see the locations of any place equipment they may have. This effect also dissipates once the interrogatee dies or is revived. Of course, this tactic should only be done if the enemy squad is nowhere to be found after one of their allies is downed. The person being interrogated can also call for help, which marks the interrogator on the map. That's a very, very useful feature. Essentially, this new mechanic offers an incredible amount of intel for taking a few seconds to interact with a downed operator. We do not recommend doing this during an active gunfight, but if a takedown happens in a large building and nobody else seems to be around, check down that injured operator and learn where their friends are. Now we're getting into circle collapse. In some games, the circle collapse will behave as normal. One circle that closes in several stages. All previous tactics for outrunning the collapse and fighting within it apply. In other games, the circle collapse can be split into multiple circles, up to three in some cases. This can happen at any time in between the first and final two collapses. When this happens, you should keep the following in mind. Smaller circles, more a CQB. Split circles will inherently be smaller than a normal circle collapse. The size also depends on how early or late a circle split happens in the match. Regardless of the exact size of, this, of these split circles, weapons that are better for end game close combat, SMGs especially, will typically have increased value. Note any large buildings or clusters of small structures to sweep through while in one of these smaller circles and mind any open spaces that can create mid to long range engagement opportunities. Cross circle engagements. While difficult, it is possible to engage with enemies in other circle collapses during a split collapse. One strategy is for expert snipers. Those who account for bullet drop and can roughly see through the hazy collapse can make out enemies in other circles. Especially when you're in a circle on high ground, such as the observatory, consider looking across the collapse and try to hit an unexpected elimination. The other, though riskier, is using a combination of gas masks and sims to will your way between circles in total desperation situations like when a squad has you pinned up against the collapse itself it may be worth burning those items to a potentially safer circle. The merge. Those who know about rotating or positioning yourself towards the next circle will need to account for all circles coming back together as one after a split collapse. Individual circles will ultimately meet in the middle of Venn diagram style. Checking the large attack map is crucial for planning next steps, as it is often best to be f toward the direction of the future safe area to get ahead of the pack. Now we're getting into the new Gulag. The Gulag has some new rules, starting with a new area. The new Gulag area is a roughly symmetrical small scale arena meant for 2v2 combat. In between the two spawn areas there is a raised courtyard on one wall and an open courtyard with a circular platform on the other. The middle lane is completely open besides a set of gallows on one side and a platform on the other. Operators who ascend to the Gulag upon first death in a battle royale before the final circle collapses will be randomly paired up with another fallen operator. All players will receive a predefined loadout at launch this will be a pistol or shotgun, a lethal grenade and a tactical grenade, with highly effective weaponry and gear placed toward the center. Within the Gulag there is a Jailer who jumps down into this, onto the circular platform during the duel. The Jailer has increased health compared to a normal operator as well as a minigun, which takes a second to wind up before unleashing a storm of bullets. Eliminating the Jailer instead of the opposition returns all four Gulag entrants back into the game, while just eliminating the opposition just brings one duel 
crew back into the match. In other words, if all four operators want to survive, they can agree to a ceasefire and focus on eliminating the jailer. Doing so may require proximity chat, more details later in the overview, and putting trust into the other duo. Otherwise, it's business as usual. Eliminate the opposition and you will return to the match with the Gulag loadouts as a parting gift. Yay! Now let's take a closer look at DMC. Real quick before we continue, the DMC part of this blog is actually quite long, so I decided to make that into its own video, which I will have linked down below in the description. So for all the DMC news and details and stuff like that, be sure to check out that video. I didn't want this video to take up too long, so I decided to split them up. So go ahead and check that out if you're interested in DMC. But let's can now continue. Looking for party and ping features. Find players who match your playstyle and communicate using an expanded in-match ping system available in both Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone 2.0. Another expanded feature, the ping system, will include a tactical ping wheel. In Battle Royale and DMC, you can hold the ping command to communicate eight options via custom visuals and voice lines. A general ping, attacking here, watching here, looting here, regrouping here, stay quiet, I need help, and the simulation related. In all other modes, this wheel is streamlined to feature going here, stay quiet, watching here, and I need help commands. Other improvements, such as pinging in the HUD, were also made over lessons learned the past three years. Now we're getting into proximity chat. Both Battle Royale and DMC matches will have proximity chat, also known as the ability to have a voice conversations with anyone nearby, enabled. Using this effectively depends on the mode. In DMC, proximity chat is crucial to ensuring an assimilation goes as planned. Alternatively, it can be used as a de-escalation tactic for players who just want to complete their objectives and get out. In Battle Royale, proximity chat is most useful in the Gulag, where you have a random squad mate to form a duo. There's enough distance between the two duos to quickly discuss strategy before the Gulag duel begins, so it's recommended that you open up comms for that. Also, keep in mind that anti-toxicity rules will be enforced, so keep those comms clean. Strongholds and Black Sites Another concept across both modes at launch is the presence of strongholds and their more elite variant, the Black Sight. At the end of the first circle, collapse in the Battle Royale matches, three strongholds are activated around the map and do not require a key for access. At the beginning of a DMC match, several strongholds will become accessible by finding a key somewhere around the map. In both modes, they are marked with large green castle icons and contain AI combatants. In Battle Royale, the first team to reach a stronghold must defuse a bomb before time expires. Otherwise, the objective is to clear a specific amount of enemies, both AI combatants and rival operators count. This is also the default objective in DMC. Once inside, operators are free to take any items after clearing threats, which can include enemy operator squads, who can enter at any time. Completing a stronghold in Battle Royale also offers a loadout crate and a temporary UAV effect of the surrounding area. Black sites available only in Battle Royale are a more dangerous form of strongholds. This requires a key, black site key, to access, which is given to the first operator or squad that clears a stronghold. The black site is marked with a skull icon and contains considerably tougher enemies, including a unique juggernaut boss. The reward for completing a black site is great. A permanent weapon blueprint is immediately rewarded for use in all modes. During the match itself, operators can also get tons of legendary items, as well as a permanent UAV of the area surrounding the black site until it is in the circle collapse. Wow. While the above is not necessary for success in either mode, it can certainly help you and the squad stock up on supplies and intel. Now we're getting to the vehicles. So of course we have the ATV. ATV? So of course we have the ATV, which we know from Warzone 1. It has one driver and two passengers, plus additional hop-ons. I don't know what that means. Then we have the UTV, which has one driver and three passengers. Then we have the hatchback, one driver and three passengers as well. The chop top with one driver and three passengers. However, this one might not be as safe when driving around in case you get shot at. Then we got the SUV, one driver, three to four passengers. Hummer EV, one driver and four passengers. Incredibly quiet and quick. I like it. Then we got the tactical vehicle, one driver and three passengers, and it looks like it has, yep, with or without a mounted 50 cal machine gun. Me like. Then we have the cargo truck, one driver, one indoor passenger, plus flatbed, as many passengers and vehicles that can fit. As many passengers and vehicles that can fit? Can you load vehicles onto this thing? First of all, if you can that, sick. Secondly, thank you Call of Duty for allowing us to have a person inside the cab next to the driver. <laughs> then we got the light helo, one pilot, four passengers, heavy chopper, one pilot, 
and cargo bay, as many passengers and vehicles that can fit. The HRIB one captain, three seated passengers, passengers plus the flat body, as many passengers that can fit. Armored patrol boat, one captain, two passengers, slash exposed 50 cal gunner, plus flat body. Vehicular techniques. As Modern Warfare 2 players can attest, you can do more with vehicles than just drive them across the map. Here are a few example strategies. Got on leaning. New to Modern Warfare 2 passengers in contained vehicles such as a hatchback or SUV, you can lean out the window to fire their weapons. This is helpful for getting a better angle on the action in front or behind the vehicle. Seat swapping. A more advanced strategy with vehicles involves swapping seats. Those who can quickly swap to a passenger seat will make the vehicle coast for a few seconds, allowing you to heal using a stim, throw on an armor plate, or potentially pick up a kill. Alternatively, switching suites often as a passenger can throw off enemy fire. Want an even riskier maneuver? You can also climb onto the roof of some ground vehicles from the passenger or driver's seat. This is great for bailing out quickly or when you want to jump on an enemy vehicle for a unique engagement starter. Vehicles also have more realistic damage in Modern Warfare 2 compared to previous games. Try shooting out the tires of an enemy vehicle to make it harder to control or blow off the doors to make it easier to target enemies inside. Fuel and health. There are two other key additions to vehicles, fuel and the ability to repair vehicle damage. Fuel appears as a meter alongside the vehicle's damage and passenger counter at the bottom of the HUD. No need to worry about the cost at the pump, fuel can be refilled either with gas cans found around the map or at gas stations. Once a vehicle runs out of fuel, it no longer works, so plan trips accordingly. The other new feature is the ability to repair vehicle damage. For land vehicles, tire damage can be fixed by manually interacting with each tire to replace it. All vehicles can also visit gas stations to have body damage and tires, if applicable, recovered over time. Managing these two features will be key to survival in both modes, whether it is outrunning a circle collapse in a battle royale or having a better means of attacking in DMC. All those previous strategies involving trophy systems and rigging vehicles with explosives still apply, however, so veteran drivers should use both old and new tricks to keep their squad moving towards victory. Buy Station 2.0 So for the Buy Station available gear we got gas masks, killstreaks, armor and more. This is the Buy Station content of old with a twist. There's a limited quantity of items that can be bought at each shop before it runs out for the match. And the item list may not be the same for each shop. Custom weapons created for custom loadouts in Battle Royale can be purchased for a considerable fee. Teammate buyback as in the original Warzone. Squadmates can buy back their fallen allies including those who lose in the Gulag. And then DMC only sell from valuables like hard drive and oak and gold bars to weapons and equipment, the shops will happily give out cash for anything in your backpack. Aquatic Combat Whether by boat or breaststroke, operators can navigate waterways, rivers and the open sea as part of their overall victory strategy. In El Masra, the largest bodies of water are as follows, as shown in the map guide. I'm making a separate video taking a look at the brand new tag map that Call of Duty has revealed to us, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. These waterways are incredibly useful for stealth operations, as operators swimming underwater are hard to track down. However, while underwater, an operator can only use small melee weapons like the combat knife and sidearms as well as equipment pieces like throwing knives. Still, these weapons are lethal enough to get the job done. Some lethal and tactical equipment pieces along with killstreaks also have special properties on water. For example, proximity mines will float and can explode boats that bump into them. Drill charges, meanwhile, burrow into the water and explode onto the water's surface. There are two major drawbacks to swimming, oxygen needs and boats. The former prevents you from swimming underwater indefinitely, the latter is instant death if they ram into you. So long as those are kept in check, feel free to use the water to your advantage. You decide. That's a massive amount of content both at the launch of Warzone 2 and planned for the seasons to come. However, to gain a full tactical advantage and a large amount of additional content, it will be wise to fully experience Modern Warfare 2. So guys, that is what we got going. If you want to see the, inf the information part of this blog post about DMC, be sure to check out that video on the channel as well. But that's it for this one. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to leave it a like, subscribe if you're new, because I will be streaming the brand new Warzone as well as Modern Warfare 2. And be making tons more videos and shorts on this stuff so stay frosty stay tuned and until next time have a wonderful day i'll see you on the battlefield